Okay, I'm back to your uh, chapter 9 handout. Um, we're going to start where we left off on the first video, um, mainly because I somehow hit stop. Um, but what is maker's depreciation? Um, all you need to know about uh, maker's depreciation is, is that it's income tax depreciation based on double declining balance, assuming every asset is purchased um, on June 30th. So they call that the half year convention. So it's just double declining balance, taking a half year in the first year. Um, MAKER stands for Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System, um, somewhat unimportant, but it's tax depreciation. So the next thing we're going to do is what happens after you have an asset for a while and you decide to change your estimates because you estimate the salvage value different or you estimate the life. So machine is purchased on January 1. Um, for $140,000, five-year life, and a 10000 residual value. So, got that? That was its original one. After two years, the cup company estimates the machine's remaining useful life is eight years instead of three, and its residual value is $8,000 instead of ten. All right. So, basically, what you need to do is you figure out how much book value, remember book value is cost minus accumulated, figure out how much book value you have and then fix it from there, um, which I'll explain in just a second. So, all right, so the beginning of the third year, so what I need to do, I'll pause this and hit two slides. Okay, so our original depreciation was cost minus salvage value, so $140,000 minus $10,000 is $130,000 divided by 5. Okay, so our cost is $140,000. Um, our residual value is $10,000, so $140 minus $10 is $130. And then um, $130,000 divided by 5 is $26,000 a year. So notice it says after two years. So I've taken two years of depreciation, so my book value in this case is $88,000. Now all we do is pretend that is our new cost. So this is our new cost minus the new residual value, so in this case $88,000 minus new residual value of $8,000. So I'm just depreciating what is left. So new cost or assumed cost $88,000, what's left on the old one, what, because you can't depreciate things twice. So if I've already depreciated, I can't take it again. So I've got $88,000 of cost that I haven't yet depreciated minus new residual value of $8,000 divided by remaining life. So be careful when you read this. Some of them tell you that the remaining life is 8 years and somebody will say the original life is 10 years instead of 5. Okay, so notice I originally thought I had 5 years. I've taken 2. Um, if I decided it's not 5, it's 10. 10 minus the 2 I've taken is 8. So I have $10,000 of depreciation a year. And so I just debit uh, depreciation expense. Debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation for the next 8 years for $10,000 a year instead of uh, the $26,000 I was doing it. Okay. Okay, the next thing that we're going to talk about is discarding an asset. Um, every fixed asset has two accounts on its books. One is the cost of the asset itself, so in um, equipment, for instance, and the accumulated depreciation. So you have to remove both accounts uh, from the books. So, um, so let's pause it a second, but let's talk, talk about the steps that we're going to do. So the first step you're going to do is to get the asset off your books. So in this case, I credited equipment. Equipment's an asset, so it's got a debit balance, so I get it off my books with a credit balance. The second thing you're going to do is get the accumulated depreciation off your books. Okay, notice they did that. Uh, this they got the $25,000 off your books. So I acquired it at a cost of $25,000 and it's fully depreciated. So my accumulated depreciation, 
I, they should have told you that it had no residual value because if it had residual value, your accumulated depreciation wouldn't have been on there. So it's discarded. So that's your journal entry. But the, set, the third thing I do is record the cash. I should say, if any. In this case, I got no cash. And then the last thing I'm going to do is record the gain. If it's a credit, I to balance or loss. If it's a debit, it'll be a loss. So you're going to see this in just a second. So, so in the first one, equipment acquired at a cost of twenty-five thousand is fully depreciated. Um, there should say and no salvage value in there. So I get the equipment off my books, the asset off my books with a credit. I get the accumulated depreciation off my books. The accumulated depreciation has a normal credit balance, so I debit it. Um, I got no cash, and my debits equal my credits, so I have no gain or loss, so I'm done. Okay, um, next one. Equipment costing $6,000 with no residual value is depreciated at an annual straight line rate of 10% which basically means 10% a year. It must have had a 10-year life. Um, after December 31st, adjusting entry, accumulated depreciation has a 46.50 balance. The asset is removed from service and discarded. So let's go through the steps. Get the asset on, off your books. The at, equipment's on my books for $6,000. So credit equipment. Whoops. I should back up. So... On March 24th, the asset is removed. I got ahead of myself. So the first thing I need to do is get my accumulated depreciation up to date. So the last time I took depreciation was December 31st, 2013. So after December 31st, 2013, the uh, accumulated depreciation has 46.50 in it. So I need to take January, February, March, three months of the depreciation on it. So I'm taking 10% a year, so that's $600 a year, but I need to take 3 twelfths of $600. So $600 times 3 twelfths is 150. So now my accumulated depreciation has 46.50 in it plus 150. So let's go to now to the entry. All right, I get the asset off my books. I credit it for $6,000. I get the accumulated depreciation off my books, which is now sitting at $4,800, which is the $4,650 plus the $150 I added in the prior entry. So let me pause this a second. I've edited my steps to add five steps. First, get the depreciation up to date, then get the asset off your books and get the accumulated depreciation off your books. Okay, so anyway, um, get the accumulated depreciation off your books. I record cash. I received no cash, so I, I can record cash and debit it for zero if I want. And then if you notice, I have 6,000 on my credit side and 4,800 on my debit side. So I need a debit for it to balance and a debit is a loss. Losses are like expenses. If I needed a credit to balance, it would be a gain. Next one, I'll read this more carefully. Equipment was purchased at a cost of $10,000. It had no estimated residual value and was depreciated at a straight line rate of 10% or it had a 10-year life. The equipment is sold for cash on October 12th of the eighth year of use. The balance in accumulated depreciation the preceding year is December 30, is $7,000. So again, I have to get my depreciation up to date. So I'm taking $1,000, 10,000 times 10% of depreciation a year but I need to do it through September. Um, notice <coughs> they sold it on October 12th, so if you wanted to take nine and a half months, that's great. But notice it through September, so through the nine months. So I have 10,000 times 9 twelfths is 10%. So I'm going to add 750. So notice I have 7,000 before it, and I've just added 750, so now I have 7,750. So let's go through the steps. Um, get the equipment off your books. It's on my books for $10,000. Get the accumulated depreciation off your books for $77.50. Record the cash. 
I should have put some cash in there, so let me back up. Okay, I should have. Oh, I guess I did. What if I sell it for twenty-two fifty? So I got. I'm doing it right here. So I got twenty-two fifty in cash. I add up my debits, they're ten thousand. I add up my credits, they're ten thousand. So I don't have anything I need to balance. Um, so I have no gain or loss. One. What if I sell it for a thousand dollars? Again, get the equipment off your books. Get the accumulated depreciation off your books. Record the cash. So in this case, I have a eighty-seven fifty on my debit side and a ten thousand on my credit side. So I need a debit to balance and a debit as a loss. Um, and then the last one, what if I sell it for $2,800? Get the equipment off your books. Get the accumulated depreciation off your books. Record the cash, $2,800. Um, now I have $10,550 on my debit side, and I only have $10,000 on my credit side, so I need a credit to balance, and that credit is a gain. There's um, a few checkups you can do. To go through them on your own you can get them on the PowerPoint um, a few other things um, if we have just some terminology if we have fixed assets we call it depreciation if you have natural resources you call that depletion it is done pretty much like the units of activities um, for depreciation, so I'm not really going to go into it. And then the last thing, if you have intangibles, you call that amortization, which is done exactly like straight line depreciation. So you just need to call it amortization expense and depletion expense if you have natural resources or intangibles. Otherwise, it's done the same way. So you can see natural resources, timber, minerals, or oil. You can read through that. But notice it's cost of resource divided by total units. So cost minus salvage value divided by the life in units. And in this case, the life in units is how many um, barrels of oil you're going to bring up. So then I get my depletion rate. Uh, Per ton in this case, so we have mineral rights, so cost is 400,000 divided by a million tons that are available in the mine, so I have 40 cents per ton, and this year I mined 90,000 90, tons, so I have $36,000 of depletion expense. So a depletion expense, accumulated depletion, exactly like units of activity. Intangibles. Intangibles are things you can't touch, so we have a legal system that protects them. Patents, copyrights, trademarks, goodwill. Uh, with the exception of goodwill, which is like land, you don't uh, depreciate it or amortize it. Um, intangibles are simply like straight line depreciation. So in this case, um, I have hundred thousand dollars divided by five years so I take um, hundred thousand divided by five and I get twenty thousand notice I take it to patents um, you can do it accumulated amortization so don't sweat it but technically uh, if you recall from the adjusting entry chapter I said you take it to accumulated depreciation because the equipment doesn't disappear well if the patent never existed in the first place the patent does disappear so you can take it straight to patents. But if you feel better about accumulated amortization, great, take it there. And you can see some of the, I will always give you the lives of some of these. You don't have to know that it's the author's life plus 70 years. Um, I will give the life to you. Um, so copyrights, trademarks, again, I'll give you the life. Uh, trademarks we usually say are unlimited because you can renew them for an unlimited amount of 10-year periods. Um, again, you don't have to know these lives, I will tell you. Um, goodwill. Goodwill uh, is not depreciated. That's all you need to know about goodwill. 
Um, goodwill, however, can be impaired, um, and that's just like land can be impaired, so can goodwill be impaired. So what I do if I have an impairment is I write it down. There you go.